Welcome to Economics Week 5. Let's begin by looking at this week's objectives. So we will be continuing on from last week and wrapping up free markets on Sunday. So what we will talk about in terms of free markets in this case is the role of the government and the importance it plays in the economy, as well as the role of the U.S. Constitution in protecting and preserving basic rights. So what rights do they protect? They protect the rights for free trade, to stop uh, corporate sharks from creating monopolies, so on and so forth, as well as playing a role that the government takes very seriously, which is to stop and prevent fraud, for instance, by creating uh, consumer protection programs, so on and so forth. So we know that the government and that central authorities are a key component of free markets, and that is how we will, we will take a look at that, be able to identify it, and describe its important importance, and then by then we would have finished our lesson on free markets. We will move on to how the government supports economic growth. So the government is not only there to protect, but it's also there to promote good practices and growth. So we will be able to explain why the government tracks and seeks to influence business cycles. That is, a cycle consists of expansion and contraction, as you know. And those are a normal aspect, a important and regular aspect of free markets. So the government has a role to play in both. We will see what tools they have to manage and how they go about doing it by also looking at some examples that have occurred in, that have occurred in the past. We'll also analyze how the government promotes economic strength and stability. Again, we will be, lucky, we will be looking at, say, monetary uh, rates and fiscal policies that the government seeks to use and utilize in order to smoothen the ups and downs of the economy. Moving on, in the same vein, we will describe the factors that increase productivity. So when we talk about productivity, of course, we're talking about time management, so on and so forth. Well, when it comes to supporting economic growth, the governments usually can play a role by, say, decreasing taxes on uh, solar energy or decreasing taxes on certain equipment that help companies increase their production in less time. So we will discuss the role that the government plays there, as well as the role that innovation and technological progress plays in the economy. There are, of course, two sides to every coin. So there are advantages that we will discuss, as well as disadvantages, too. So finally, our final lesson will be related to public goods and externalities. When we say public, we mean governmental. So when we say the public sector, we're talking about the government and it's the role it plays. So, for example, say in some countries, there's free dental care for children that's insured by the government. That is a form of a public good. That is something that the government offers. Another example would be, let's say, infrastructure. Let's say there's a new railroad that's going to be set up by the government to help move goods from one place to another. Again, this is an example of a public good, and it is one that competes actually with the public sector, with the private sector at times, whereas in others, it works in harmony with the private sector. So we will be looking at these things, uh, finding examples, historical events, so on and so forth, as well as incorporating some current events too, to help us have a more well-rounded understanding of the topic. Thank you.